Hey everybody, I'm Herm Freeman at 305 and I'm here to talk about the element of line in paintings. Here's one of my landscape paintings standing in front of Gardin and the line is like a little GPS. It's, uh, it directs your eye, it depicts, it describes, it delineates, it makes stuff dissolve and disappear, but it is a primarily a unifier. Line can be a unifier, except when line is uh, the element used to hide stuff, used to describe hidden objects. So I've used line in two different ways here, and uh, uh, I encourage you to use line in your work. Hey everybody, I'm Katie Settle, and I'm coming to you from the Knowlton. Uh, today I want to talk to you about movement. I have this picture here, which is a great example. It's of a bunch of kids jumping into a lake, and what the best part about it is you can feel their energy. Look at how their fingers are separated, their arms are stretched, and you can see all of their limbs, their faces, their expressions. With movement, it just brings you into the picture. You can feel the excitement. You can actually feel the jump. Hey, everybody. It's Ricky Mestri from the Nelton, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the principle of pattern. Now, if we take one of my images over here that I created, we see there's a lot of patterns going on over here. We see some patterns in the fabric of his pants and over here on the jewelry and his bracelets and things like that. But there's also other patterns you may want to take notice of, like these circular shapes that kind of form a pattern around the painting as well. You see some over here on his... Uh, Suspenders is what we call them, and uh, they're just kind of all over the place, making another kind of a pattern that we can view when we're like looking at art, and that kind of a thing just really, you know, gives us a sense of uh, you know harmony when we're looking at an image like this with all these circular shapes uh, all over. Hi everyone, my name is Joel Sarver, and I'm here to talk to you about mark making and gesture when you're looking at a painting. My work here uses a lot of mark and gesture. And what I do is I channel different emotions every day into my work, and you can usually tell those emotions through the marker gesture that I use. Sometimes the marks are very slow and deliberate. Those might give you feelings of peace and calm. Otherwise, there's a lot of um, aggression or maybe some scratching, some quick brush work, and those can give you feelings of disturbance or maybe you were angry that day. Hey everyone, so I am Sai and I'm going to be talking to you about the element of color. So I'm going to direct your attention right over here. So this is a photograph of Ashley who happens to be a wonderful mom who has a very busy life um, and she's a makeup artist. So being that we were capturing the essence of what she can do with makeup, we really wanted to make everything pop, but also give the story of her family life. And what better way to capture it than with Fruity Pebbles, capturing all this color that just drives your eyes to the center of the photo and really brings out what exactly you want to be captured in a photograph. Hi, I'm Nicole Cantori Kester from the Knowlton Building. I'm a mixed media artist, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the principle of emphasis that I use on this series of pieces, this one in particular. Um, I call my series Sacred Circles because I'm doing kind of like a mandala meditative formation with circular objects, like the thimbles and the spools of thread, the recycled um, bottles, uh, buttons. It's um, I do a lot of repeat, repurposing, recycling, emphasizing on giving it a circular motion so that you go through the piece almost like a halo effect or a um, just really nice and peaceful meditative infinity, if you will. Um, and I hope you enjoy. Hi. My name is Dale. I'm on the second floor of 305, and I'm glad to be here. I, I, I'm glad to be associated with other artists. I work in bronze, and I work in form, free forms. Uh, and for example, this one right here, uh, it's, it's an unusual piece in the fact that it looks like it's falling over maybe, but it's not. It's balanced in the sense that the proportions it, uh, it's several things. When you look at it, it reads as a whole, but it's actually pieces. And I, I can't explain it other than it's just a feeling that artists have when they do their work. And I'm hopefully, you know, I can explain more to you at some point 
in the near future at 3.05. Thank you. The camera doesn't act 10 pounds. Bad lighting does. Emily Swift Studios here at the Knowlton, and I am a photographer and videographer who every single day works with lighting. So I'm going to chat with you guys about how the value of the light is going to affect the contrast. So sitting here under this natural light, you can see that everything is very soft. It's really nice. It's really easy on the eyes. But now see how it changes when I hop on set. Boom. Now we've added so much more artificial light. The contrast is through the roof and there is so much more value in this visual. So one of my favorite things to do in my studio practice is combine artificial lighting with the nice soft natural lighting for a really interesting result. So check out my website to see some examples of that. Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Joseph here at the Knowlton to talk to you today about texture. Texture is absolutely integral to almost any painting, whether it's just the brush stroke, uh, you know, giving you a sense of the painter's emotion as they moved through a piece. For me, in my work as an abstract expressionist and color theorist, texture gives me the opportunity to have some colors peek out over others for co uh, contrast. Other times, texture might help me tell a story as to the narrative I want to move with. So for this piece from my Leith collection, which has just been completed, I used texture to give this sort of mark-making, Twombly-esque handwriting style motif that really pops off the paper. Typically, heavily textured work you would think is on panel or canvas, but in this new collection, I decided to transition my texture onto paper. <laughs> 